Hey everybody. Hello. Hello. <laughs> that's maybe I'm Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. That's like, that's like that. <laughs> hey, all my fellow gamers and painters and players and such. Welcome to another episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. I am your host, Rick, and I got a co host over here, Leona. Hello. We were going to try to get Johnny in front of the camera, but he requires uh, alcohol or something like that. So <laughs> didn't work out. So he's back over there. I've right. told you before, all requests must be submitted in writing. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. And I mean, write. <laughs> Unless it's on slate with chalk or with pictographs like a caveman. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, that's all I got. So Hence painting. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Good. Very cool. So what's everybody doing today? Who knows? Out there in, the, in, the, in, the land of, in the land of reality. I know what we're doing. We're painting some more Tomb of Annihilation. Yes, we are. And we're moving on with different figures or miniatures. I always call them figurines. Um, I'm painting the ter pterodactyl. Terrafolk. I'm mm. painting a terrafolk, as you can see. And um, it is a pterodactyl, but he is a little bit more vicious, I think. Yeah, he kind of reminds me of uh, there's a a villain from the Savage Lands that was in um, X-Force comics, I believe, uh, that looks like this guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I think his name was Sauron, too. I think it was Sauron, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Like. Yeah. yeah. S -A -U -R 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 -R. As, as in, like, Lord of the Rings, but, like, you know, not a giant floating eye. Right, right, Correct. right. Nice. Very cool. Good call there, Johnny. So yeah, and what are you painting, Rick? Oh, you're gonna I'm paint painting a, some a of bunch the of tiny, stuff. some of the tiny, tiny, tiny little, guys. little babies that I was talking about. Yeah, that are so cute. Yeah, you've got Honestly. one of the little uh, velociraptors. So this is adorable. called a Zorro or Zorbo. This little guy right here, um, but I'm just gonna call it the drop bear. He just looks like a little drop bear. Uh, he's here. Pull it away. Yeah, there a little he is. bit more. They're so tiny. But I'm going to be painting all these little ones. Uh, see if how many of I can get done today. I think two. You might. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all see who's in the chat. Mini Painting Studio, hello. Emily, hello. Walter, hello. One Inch Heroes, hello. And Nick, hello. Oh, wow, lots of people saying lots of things. Emily says, I just got done with my freelance work and now free to do personal creative stuff. So time to watch some mini painting studios and get the juices of, get the juices flowing for art. Sorry. <laughs> Sounds good, Emily. I agree. It's nice when you can um, be finished with projects and then kind of let your creativity absolutely grow. Yeah, because we all need that outlet. You know, it's kind of you know it's kind of nice that where we can uh, paint these. Granted, during working hours. Yeah. But it. You know, we're showing off some stuff that is available. That you guys, if you guys like D and D, which I guessing most of you do, in some capacity, or just like painting miniatures, uh, these are great miniatures to paint. Yeah. And uh, well, and I so. I had talked with Dave um, kind of about once I was asking him about um, you know your commission to do work, and then like how do you find time to like be creative or mm -hmm. get your creativity out? And he said it's kind of nice sometimes to go on painting minis and just be able to paint without a lot of uh, constraints. Because uh -huh. it's not like he's bringing like commission work right. on here. So. Yeah, that's that's cool. I like, thanks. thanks, Dave. Thanks for saying that. But yeah. Dave is still in England, right? Yes. Still abroad. Yeah. Abroad. He'll be back next week. And then uh, Leona will be back I will be the voice. <laughs> I will be not in front of the camera. <laughs> Doing voice stuff again. Yes. As, as, asking questions and prompting us to uh, conversation. Exactly. One of the things I wanted to talk about today uh, is uh, as we're doing Tomb of Annihilation and we're painting these amazing miniatures uh, by WizKids, uh, is what kind of like movies, we've kind of talked about this before, like early, early into our, um, when we were doing Painting Hampton Minis with some of our people that were watching. Okay. I feel it's topical again. 
Okay. Uh, big movies are hitting. The, are about to hit. You know, coming up next week. Dun, dun. Uh, what are some movies that you enjoyed that are thematic to like a fantasy setting, like Dungeons and Dragons esque, uh, to include the D and D movies that were made already, um, or Lord of the Rings type stuff? You know, what, what are some uh, rattle some off and, and why did you enjoy it, or what was like the thing about it that really drew you into it? So the question is, what are some of your favorite fantasy movies? But I also noticed Nick says, I just wanted to say I found out these videos about a month ago, and I wake up Thursdays now looking forward to watching them. Thank you, Nick. That's that a is, really nice compliment. That is, that's awesome. Yeah. He doesn't wake up to them on Tuesdays, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, nobody wants to wake up on Tuesdays. It's, that's yeah. the other Monday. Tuesday's a bad day. It's, also, Walter asks, um, are there any veggie pipe? Pygmies in the box? There are. I've got a couple right here. Oh, okay. Um, and they're on my list of ones that I'll be painting today as well. So I've got some veggie pygmies. And uh, our new mascot really likes them too. <laughs> he thinks they're really cute. Hey, cool, look at that. Do you want to bring them over yeah. to my camera? And Because I think mine has a little bit. Sorry, Johnny, to make you switch. Oh, it actually um, does have a lot more clarity. Yeah. This camera. Yeah. Or just my big hands. See so, yeah, how there they are. Yeah. They're pretty cool. There's also some like um, but but three goblins, which are kind of cool. Which ones? Oh, these the ones? goblins. They have like their hair pulled back and like a top knot. Oh, I could even even a little. Just making sorry, I'm making sure I get the focus. Yeah, it's hard to see a little bit on camera, but they have this like kind of crazy hair stuff going on. Yeah. And then you see my shaky hand. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, I'll take this back. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. All righty. Mini Painting Studio says, my fave fantasy movie is the film where they leave the trap maker home alone, and then he has to throw two rogues and attempt to break in multiple times. So it is a good dungeon crawl. You're right. Uh, anybody familiar with what this movie might be? <laughs> It's where the trap maker is left home alone and two rogues try to break into the dungeon. I think I know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Beastmaster was an awesome movie, says Chris. Oh, says right. Chris. Um, and Timothy says Hawk the Slayer because it was one of the only movies back then. I have never seen Hawk the Slayer, but I have seen um, Beastmaster many times. I do enjoy it. So Beastmaster was this guy who could kind of he had like a bunch of like uh, animal companions. Okay. And two of his companions were ferrets, <laughs> and they would like s sneak in and, and grab stuff for him and stuff. There you go. I mean, there's a, it, it's a much broader story than just him with animals. Right. But. That's cool. So all of these creatures and things live in happy harmony with each other in a tomb. Hard pill to swallow, <laughs> Mark. They do. They actually live in harmony because they know that food will be coming soon in the form of adventurers. Sorry. So they don't really have to turn on each other, as they can just you know accept the fact that here comes the next tasty morsel. Oh, is that a rogue? Oh, they're so gamey. I don't like rogues. <laughs> Three paladins and rogue clean up in a town, up a town full of neutral evil fighters. Tombstone. Tombstone, nice. Good. I was saying one of my favorite fantasy sort of movies was uh, Princess Bride. Yeah. Yeah, that's a. I mean, that's a great movie for anybody. You've got. I mean, you got the love story aspect yeah. to it. You've got the adventure and the and everything with uh, uh, Indigo Montoya. And it has Fezzik. great dialogue. Yeah. It's very watchable over and over and over and over again. That's a fact. Speaking from experience. Kodo and Proto, Podo were the ferrets. Oh. Those are the names? Oh, that's pretty good. I know for me, growing up, uh, Labyrinth was always a favorite. And yeah, I think oh, there's Labyrinth also is a. Amazing. Isn't there a game that just got released, a Labyrinth uh, tabletop game? Yes. I think, yeah, someone painted some of the minis. Did it have minis, or was it were they custom? Because someone um, was—I don't recall. Okay, because someone was painting them, like posted in the Happy Mini group. 
Okay. La Labyrinth um, minis. Oh. They were they looked really good. Um, Steve asks if there's any if Whiskers is gonna do any Nolzers Marvelous miniatures uh, dragons. They already have one. It's the silver dragon. Um, it's very small in comparison to what you would think of a, a dragons, but it's it's like a young adult sized dragon. Okay. But they do have one. Worth picking up. And yes, Walter, this is a tetra. This is a tetra folk. Terra folk. Terra folk. Whatever. <laughs> yes, this is a terra folk. Yep. Oh, uh, Mark says Excal Excalibur was the best. Ooh, Excalibur is so good. Where are you talking about the Merlin? Merlin, yeah. If you oh, Caleb out yeah. there on the table. Right out there, there's the the, the, the foam uh, terrain. And we have a, bunch a mini. Of unpainted miniatures. We have a mini that looks right like. Um, yeah, yeah, there's the one that ones. looks like a wizard. Yeah. We have some metal painted. ones. He's unpainted. No, he's unpainted. Just bring the whole thing over here and we'll find him. But there's a miniature that looks like Merlin. The, the, yeah, the actual. From Excalibur. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to get so we can show you. <laughs> Just to give some context. Right here? Uh, yeah, right here. Yep. Okay. Give it give it to her. She'll make a better uh, okay. camera. Yeah. Yeah. Gracias. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you can tell by looking at the miniature, you'll see the skull cap on the mm. on the on him oh. there. And he's so he looks just like Merlin from the show. It's so cool. It actually oh yeah, you're right. It looks like his hair, but there actually is like a skull cap there. Yeah. This is a cool mini. I like these minis. So. What's up, Craig? I am going to put this down. <laughs> oh, Willow. What a great <gasps> movie. With the Mad, uh, Mad Mardigan. Yeah. Yeah. You, don't you know I'm the greatest swordsman that ever lived? Yeah. It's so My good. friend. Oh, actually, um, Lady in the Water. Uh, by M. Night Shyamalan? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Like one of his only good movies. Isn't that like his, his version of Little Red Riding Hood? I think so, something like that. I don't know, that has like a lot of nostalgia for okay. me. My, Cause my friend and I like really liked that movie so we would always watch it. Nice. Um. The um, one thing about Willow Wathgood that I thought was great was the very beginning when he tries out to be a, the, you know, the apprentice and the old Wizard is like, which finger has the power to control the universe? And he's like, pauses, and of course he picks one of the wizards. Wrong. <laughs> and come to find out, if he would have chose his own, it would have been correct. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, you gotta have self confidence. Confidence. Willow Wathgood. Mad Mardigan was a chaotic neutral fighter, so good. Oh yeah, he was, he, yeah. But I think his alignment changed once he became uh, enamored with uh, the female antagonist that also becomes a, a good guy Oops. in the end. My hat keeps hitting the camera. <laughs> Dragon, Dragon Slayer was badass. Oh, Dragon Slayer, also another good movie. And uh, if I'm right, wasn't that a Disney, pro uh, Disney movie? I don't know. I'm not sure. But um, anybody here ever watch? Uh, I mean, the, the guy who played the Dragon Slayer was in Ally McBeal. Anybody Peter watch McNichol. It? What? Peter McNichol. Peter McNichol. He was also Janos Poha in Ghostbusters 2. Correct. Hmm. But uh, looking at him, you wouldn't guess that that's the guy that was the Dragon Slayer. <laughs> you know, many, many years ago. Right, right, right. Um, I see what you're saying. But uh, he was also in something more recently. I think he, I think he was in the, in the show Numbers. Yep. And he was like a, a, a professor, a mathematics pro professor. Was that about, like, detective crime solving? Yeah, like, one guy was a detective or an FBI agent, and his brother was like this super smart mathematician who would come up with these... Um, equations to solve crimes. Okay. Um, and I think Fred Savage played the the smart kid. Craig and Chris say Kroll. 
Oh, Crow, also good. Yes. Oh, one inch here says Dragon Slayer was Paramount Studios, not yeah. Disney. Okay, I wasn't sure. Just so we're all clear. Because the dragon in that was. Phenomenal. Speaking of Disney, though, one that was a Disney uh, film was The Black Cauldron. Oh. Ooh, yeah. And Sword and Stone. Yeah. Yeah, those are good. Black, Black Cauldron was really good. Even well, I also like Brave. The like most recent mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. 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 Actually, that was good. Um, with the mom, the whole mom thing. Yeah, the mother-daughter The whole mom story. thing. <laughs> yeah. It was cool because um, not a lot of movies like tie that in a mm -hmm. lot, and so it was nice to see that being as a storyline. Chris Lazur says uh, Lady Hawk was a, good, was a good one. You ever see that? Yeah. So Lady Hawk nope. had um, Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, Matthew Broderick, and um, God, what was the... the okay. What was the main guy's name? Um, uh, man, what was the guy who was in love with uh, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's character? What, the actor he played in Blind Fury. Um, I'm not sure. Man, I'm, it's killing me. <laughs> He's an iconic '80s action guy in some capacity. Okay. Uh, Fire and Ice was really good. Was it Rucker Hauer? Rucker Hauer. Yep. Uh, thanks there, One Inch Heroes. Rugger Hauer, so in the story, Rugger Hauer and this and, and Michelle Pfeiffer's characters were in love. Okay. But this like priest was all fell in love with her as well and cursed her. Oh. Cursed them as a couple. Okay. So they could only see each other in the in the passing of of twilight. Okay. But during the night he was a wolf, mm -hmm. and during the day she was a, a hawk. Oh. And so it and uh, Matthew Broderick it becomes like this. Um, linchpin character that tries to help them mm -hmm. break the curse and, right. st and stuff. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it was really. That's a good. cool story, or a cool premise. It's like Swan Lake, except a little yeah. different. Some cool. Walter says they need to make a new Dungeons and Dragons movie. Rumor has it they are making one. Really? Yeah, and. Uh, like. Do you know who's starring in it? No. Okay. <laughs> Nobody knows who's starring in it. Um, but I also know that the 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 actor uh, who played the werewolf on True Blood, and um, I know who in, you're talking about, but I don't know his name. Yeah. Uh, he was writing a screenplay for a Dragonlance movie, or at least was talking about writing a screenplay to it, and. Uh, we don't know if that actually has come, or if he's done it or is doing it, but okay. that would be cool if he was. Are you talking about Joe Manganiello? I am talking about Joe Manganiello. <laughs> yes. I'm really bad with names. It's okay. If you guys haven't figured that out yet, that is, uh, I can tell you faces. Right. And storylines, but names, nope. Um, Chris says a good show that is current um, is the Shannara Chronicles. Shannara Chronicles, which got canceled again. Oh, that's sad. I know it's like a full book series. Yeah. Um, I really want to read the books uh, before I see the um, the TV show. The TV show. So, Chris, let me know if how well it follows the. I'm I'm interested to know does it follow the books very well, <laughs> or at all? <laughs> uh, I've already I've watched it all. Oh, okay. You have. Oh yeah. You've I read mean, the books. Uh yeah yeah. Okay. The so. Funny, that and I'm, what I'm gonna say is no. They okay. <laughs> There's a lot to it, you know, much like any book, there's a lot more in the book. Right. And it doesn't, books don't always translate very well verbatim, mm -hmm. because you just can't, to the to the book, to the... The movie. The movie. I mean, or yeah. Yeah, to on screen. Right. But, I mean, they definitely have the same theme, like the first one is kind of like, uh, follows the elf stones of Shannara, then the next one is like uh, the, the sword of Shannara. Okay. You know. But it was on MTV, I believe, first. Then it got canceled, and it got picked up on another series, um, another uh, channel, and then it, they canceled it after their season. So I, th I think they only did two seasons. Okay. And now, my whole thing is Netflix, save us. Oh yeah. Bring it, pick it up. Um, some well, who where where? Oh, apparently, um, Joe. Magdanello? Yeah. He's apparently a huge D and D nerd. He is. So, yeah. 
so maybe he'll talk to the right people and get that going. The girl that was also on True Blood with him that was uh, the red-headed vampire girl, the young one. Okay. Uh, something Anne. Forget who, I know you're talking about, she was also on Daredevil. Yeah, she's on Daredevil. She oh, she is? Who was she on? The oh, secretary. I love that actress. And she's she was good. in Punisher as well. Yeah. Um, but she is also a big D&D &D fan. Okay. She, she actually so is a dungeon master, runs her own campaigns. Oh my goodness, that's yeah. cool. That, yeah. Daredevil, that was a good one. Not fantasy, but... <laughs> Craig says he wants to see Jason Momoa as Dritz. That would be awkward considering Jason Momoa is like 6'4", and Dritz is like 5'2"-ish. <laughs> But again, Wolverine is only supposed to be five foot seven, but was played by a six foot, six foot two actor. There you go. So, is that really how tall? What's his name is? He um, doesn't look that tall. Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Yeah, six foot two. Doesn't look that tall on screen. <clears throat> oh well. Chris says that Netflix is doing a season three. Oh Ooh. wow! Awesome. Good job, Netflix, picking yeah. it up. Well, if anyone was going to do it, it would be Netflix yeah. or like Amazon or something. They know all about that. Mm -hmm. Those numbers. They know what sells. They know what's up. It's true. <clears throat> the, um, another one of my favorite ones is Legend. I don't think I've said that yet. No. On camera? No, you haven't. But Legend with Tom Cruise um, and uh, Tim Curry. Tim Curry plays Doc, Lord Darkness. <laughs> he looks like this devil. Okay. These huge horns. Okay. And one of my favorite lines is uh, when uh, he first, they fight each other. Right. And he like runs at Jack and the horns into the wall and Jack's down and he goes, don't you know me, boy? <laughs> it's like, <gasps> yeah, we do know you and you are bad. bad. <laughs> we know you're terrifying. Yeah. It's so good. It is terrifying. Well, when you can have like movie moments like that, or it's really fun. And I think fantasy alludes like has a lot of those moments, different fantasy movies where it's like something just because of the nature of yeah. um, the plot, there'll be like one iconic scene and you're like, ah. Oh. Yeah, the one that sticks with you forever. <laughs> right. Yeah. That is your most, or like your most quote, your personal most quotable line from any movie. Right. Right. Uh, you know, like Conan. Come mm -hmm. on. I mean, that's iconic when it comes to fantasy and yeah. uh, everything. And um, from the movie, my favorite lines are when, uh, you, you know, um, Thulsa Doom is like, you break into my home, you kill my pet, mm -hmm. and you steal my property. I mean, you steal my property and you kill my pet. And that's what's, that's what's the worst, you know, thing is, you killed my snake. <laughs> <laughs> and then Conan goes off on his tangent of, you killed my mother, right. you killed my father, you killed my people. And he's like, hmm. <laughs> you took my father's sword. It must have been when I searched for steel. <laughs> it's like, he's just, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I wiped out your entire village, whatever. <laughs> Womp. Yeah. Steve says, um, Curry is my favorite, Pennywise as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, Curry is just was, is an amazing talent, and amazing. You know, his his portrayal of Cardinal Richelieu in the Three Musketeers was amazing. Another good, you know, look at what could be considered a fantasy D and D esque. You know, you got three mm. swashbucklers mm. going to save the kingdom. That is true. You know, from the evils of Cardinal Richelieu. <laughs> We'll Yank. forgive him for Muppet Treasure Island, though. <laughs> Will we? Because I thought he did a great job. <laughs> I love Muppet Treasure <laughs> No, in all seriousness, like, uh, Tim Curry is such an incredibly versatile actor, yeah. but his work in Legend is just absolutely amazing. Yeah. I had no idea for years that was even him. Right? But the, the other big thing about that is, think about what it took to costume him up in that prosthetic headset, headdress, mm. and all those huge horns, mm. um, and then the rest of the body work that, it, you know, for the costume, that had to have just been tedious and 
sweaty and gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Cannon. Yeah, Beastmaster we, we, that is absolutely amazing. Uh, Craig says, "Is your heart black?" And then uh, Blix goes, "Black as midnight, black as pitch, blacker than the foulest witch." That's from Legend as well. Okay. Yeah, when Lord Darkness talks to his goblins. It's nice. Like, Blix, are you not the most loathsome of my goblins? <laughs> it's like, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, it is a frog hemoth statue over my right shoulder, right there. That is the frog hemoth from Reaper Miniatures. Bum, bum. Bum. <laughs> That's coming from uh, Caleb. Why are you, are you? Did you text that quick, Caleb? Hmm? Huh? No, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no. Uh, Thulsa Doom is a lich who battled Cole, the Conqueror. Okay. I uh, messed that up. My bad. No, that was great, man. That's awesome. I mean, there's so many good quotable lines in fantasy, like you said. Yeah. It, you know, Just uh, the nature of the stories and the characters. Yeah. And Especially if they're well written, like you said about Princess Bride. Mm -hmm. Anybody want a peanut? You know, those, those <laughs> things. But he's only carrying one man. Right. And you were supposed to be this great bang, this great thing. And yet he gains. And, you know? and yet he gains. <laughs> he, <laughs> I'm carrying three, three people. people. He, he only has himself. No excuses. <laughs> Inconceivable. I don't think that one means what you think it means. Right. I, that movie literally <laughs> is littered with some of the best uh, lines for I could quote that movie all the time. Yep. To this day, I still say, have fun storming the castle. <laughs> yeah, and we say that all yeah. in the <laughs> office. <laughs> it's the best. The, um, but more recently, of, of course, we've had Lord of the Rings. We've had... Yeah. Um, the Hobbit. Womp womp. <laughs> oh, I love The Hobbit. The whole, the whole trilogy, even with the little add-ins, nope. were fine for me. I... Sorry, I almost scratched my... Uh, Mike there, um, I like The Lord of the Rings, but The Hobbit was a bit too much Peter Jackson fanfic for me. Okay. Yeah. You know what I liked about The Hobbit? What? The I fanfic? Got, <laughs> the fact that I got a Hobbit movie. Okay. <laughs> I really liked the first one, the first Hobbit movie, and I was like, oh, this is cool, and then the second two, I was like, these are not as my... Well, you mentioned that you liked the animated Hobbit movie. I did. And that's yeah. a, that, that is an amazing that is really good. take on, on it as well. Yeah. I also feel like animated movies, you can do a lot more with. Yeah. You know? And I, I, I feel like there should be more animated movies. Like higher production mm -hmm. animated movies? Yeah. Actually, um, that would be really cool. If they... I know we're getting one. Not a fantasy version one, but a, um, a Spider-Man animated movie is coming out. Oh, okay. And I think it's going to be in theaters. Like pretty high quality? Yeah. Do you know what studio is doing it? I do. I mean, it's got to be somewhat in association with Sony. Okay. Yeah, it's a Sony picture. Oh, but okay. It's, um, yeah. it's called like Into the Spider-Verse? Yeah, something like that. It's it's, it's uh, Miles Morales yeah. uh, story arc. Oh, sorry. I'm hitting my... I have my hat on and I'm hitting the camera. Womp. Regrets. The animation oh, in that looks really good, though. Nice. Yeah, so the, so the animated movie is called Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Okay, cool. Oh, Walter says the animated is my favorite. Yeah, the I. The animated is really good, even though it's like really cheesy, as I said, like with the fighting and yeah. the, <laughs> the the swirling when he says Dev. I don't name it, you know, Sting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so cheesy. <laughs> It's all good though. Yeah, have you guys seen the, live, uh, the animated Lord of the Rings movie? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, the, the, an the animation is way different than a lot of other types of animation because it feels like they, they shot scenes with actual actors they and then they, uh, they animated cells over those characters. Yeah, part of it was fully hand drawn animation and, and then, yeah, some of it was recorded. Like a lot mm -hmm. of the more action oriented scenes, like the right. fight scenes, they were. I think they were either recorded and stylized somehow, or like you said, they drew animated cells over the uh, over, over the, the oh, yeah over the celluloid film. When did that come out? It was like seventies. Yeah. I say. Oh, okay. I think so. 
because I'm like, I've literally never heard of this. <laughs> the animated Lord of the Rings. Because I've only seen the Hobbit one. Yeah. So, what did, was it like the same studio, do you know? I don't recall the okay. studios that did it. Um, another one, because that's what we're talking about. While we're painting the miniatures here for Tomb of Annihilation, for those of you that are just tuning in, we're talking about fantasy movies and, and uh, that we all love and enjoy. And one of them that just kind of popped in my head as we're sitting there talking about the Lord of the Rings and all that stuff mm -hmm. is Watership Down. Have you ever seen that? No. I've seen clips of it. Watership Down is in a fantasy adventure movie, but all the main characters and all the characters are rabbits. Why? And it is in a realistic scene, or it, a realistic setting. But like, it's basically this, the rabbits need to move from one spot to another okay. because there's something going on with their land, okay. and they and and so they adventure out. It has a kind of Secret of Nim theme, kind oh, of okay. well, yeah. you know, um, but it's extremely violent. Yeah. Huh. Like, Wait, back to the um, animated Lord of the Rings. Yeah. 1978. Okay. John Hurt played did the voice of Aragorn. Oh, nice. And Anthony Daniels, who played of uh, C-3PO fame, was the voice of Legolas. Oh, hmm. that's cool. Wow. Yeah. So that's there's nice. some interesting trivia for you. It is yeah. pretty cool. Johnny, Johnny on the spot, back there doing his Google is is look you Googleizing. Googleizing, Google, boop, 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 research. Oh man. John Hurt was the uh, the warden of the city, right? In the movies. In the movies. In yeah, John Hurt. Oh, the animated version. No, in the movie, Lord of the Ring, or yeah, yeah, the no, Return of the King. Think, no, I don't think you're talking about the same person. Who's oh, the guy? Talk about no, that's that was someone else. What was his name? <laughs> oh. Come on, Johnny. G give me a sec. Also, to answer Craig, um, Rick, what are, you're painting the... The goblins right now. You're painting the uh, Battery, Battery... But, but, yeah, the Battery Goblins. The Battery Goblins. Battery Goblins, something like that, yeah. Battery Goblins. And also the little, little tiny other minis, yeah. right? Yeah, all the little minis. That are... Oh, my hat keeps hitting the camera. Sorry, Johnny. Sorry. <laughs> uh, going back to the... Lord of the Rings movie again. I just wanted to bring this up. I'm sure you guys, I'm sure you two are aware of it, but the first Lord of the Rings movie was both of the first two books combined, and then the third book, Return of the King, had its own movie. And uh, the animation was a, right. seemed a little more low budget, and it was also a musical. That's true. It was a musical. And some of the cheesiest, most glorious songs yeah. in, I don't know. Of that, of that time. Of that time, yeah. It's cool. I can't find the actor's name. I just I know he was on um, Fringe as well. Correct. And recently, the, that same actor was in. Uh, um, he was doing the voice of the bad demon on Legends of Tomorrow. And they were watching it, or they were having this discussion. And Lord of the Rings was playing in the background, and he, the, the actor who played that character was talking. They're like, that guy sounds just like the. Like what? Like the, the 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 demon, and so they go and they find him at his trailer at whatever production he's working on, and they get him to uh, read some lines. <laughs> on the show. On the show, it that's was funny. so funny. That's funny. I mean, that's how campy Legends of Tomorrow was, though, yeah. or is. Yeah. I, yeah. Again, that's why my friend couldn't finish it because she was like, "Oh my gosh, this is too much, too much." It's not too much. It's glorious. Just right. It's it just, just right. right. The, the level of campiness between that and iZombie, perfect. Oh, man, iZombie, yeah. That was really campy. It is campy. Chip to glasses, crack the plates. No? That's what Bilbo Baggin hates. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite, like, song sequences. And then I really liked what they did with the dwarves, too. The dwarf the Dorbin song, the, mm -hmm. the um, Lonely Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, um, it's a TV series, so it's not a movie, but the the Robin Hood, the BBC Robin Hood. Really good. Yeah. yeah. But doesn't he die? Yeah. And then it's like, how does this movie still go on? It, like it's this because it's the series. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, but I really like. But actually, that's um, Thorin. I forget the actor's name. But he that he plays like the Sherlock. I mean Sherlock. The sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> the sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah. And 
that's I couldn't get that out of my head when I was watching that. So movie. Thor and Oakenshield is played by the sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's that's the sheriff. Funny. It's the sheriff. It's the I'm the like, sheriff. he's not a king. He's a sheriff. <laughs> He's a good actor. Gray, purple. Do you have a purple over there? Yeah, well, what kind of purple? I have this dark and then this purple that's light. I like the dark purple. Okay. Wasteland soil. I'll take some wasteland soil. Oh, yeah. And Craig says, I like the BBC Merlin. I'm like watching through that right now. Um, Almost every character that is, or every actor that plays a major lead or role in the Merlin series mm -hmm. is on uh, the 10th wow. Doctor's. Uh, run, it seems. Oh, really? Yeah, they show up somehow. Not as the characters from Merlin, obviously, but right. just actors being actors doing work. Doing actor -y things? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, Merlin Merlin is really campy, um, but I like it. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> like, I don't, I guess I don't mind when it's campy fantasy. Campy sci fi, I'm like, not about, but. Oh, you don't like campy fantasy or sci fi? Yeah. Well,. That's too bad. <laughs> what, Legends of Tomorrow apparently is a show I need to watch. No. Um, the, uh, it, uh, what is it? Uh, shoot, we've been talking about it all week. Final Space. Final Space. Oh, well, yeah. It's also animated, too. But it's animated, so I feel like I can forgive it for being really campy. Oh, man, this is not the color that I want. Mm. Dave is always so sure with his colors. He's like, this is the best color. It's a 30 plus years of painting. Yeah. He's going to say, I don't have a painting for 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> 30, 100 years. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. There's a Velociraptor. Starfinder, the movie. Says Starfinder. Is that? Like, you mean Starfinder, like? Do you, do you mean Stardust? Oh, no, I don't think so. You know what that is? That, movie? like, really cheesy one? By, uh, yeah, written by. And, and the guy Neil who Gaiman plays Daredevil is the main, is the main character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's... Okay, I finally found it. Oh, you did? The warden of the city was. Uh, Denethor, and it was played by John Noble, not John. John Noble. Noble. Thank you. It took me that long to find it. <laughs> oh, John Hurt was the uh, the war doctor. Oh, he was also in uh, Hellboy. Yeah. Okay. He was father. Yeah. Oh, Craig says no Starfinder the game. <laughs> Which, oh, my bad. <laughs> apparently, there was a movie. Is a movie? happening or maybe he's saying he would like a starfinder oh a starfinder movie would be great yeah like similar to like the fact that we want dungeons and dragons this yeah. guy has a butt it's a velociraptor oh he's so cute they're so cute they are so cute i love them little babies even though they'll probably kill you kill you dead in the in the game Yep. <laughs> That's how Jurassic Park 2 started. That's true. With the killer babies? Yeah. There was a family out on a beach, a little girl wandered off into the woods, and all these like little miniature like dinosaurs came out and ate her. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Well, That's not good. Wow. Um, also, the Jurassic World um, trailer, I like laugh every time I see it, because it's so amazing. Like. Chris Pratt is just like running and it's so funny and I find it hilarious like that movie is like not real anymore it's just hilarious <laughs> the yeah, whole thing the whole thing is just like I just find hilarious <laughs> so I'm really excited to see it because it's just going to be like over, the, over the yeah top. it's just going to be so over the top well watching him like jump between the T-Rex's teeth yeah it's like whoa it's like impossible yeah Chris says he loved Merlin, just binged all the seasons. Yeah, I. the thing is with Merlin is it got to the very end, and I didn't want it to end, so I stopped. Last uh, season, I was like, no! So now I'm, like, re-watching it from the beginning. Oh, no. 
that one's fun because like if you like the old English like lore of Arthur it like is about that so Steve's asking uh, if I've played the Tales from Candle Keep Tomb of Annihilation yet and is it worth the money if you have played it is it a video game because I haven't I haven't played it um, what is it called? Uh, Tales of uh, Tales from Candle Keep the Tomb of Annihilation I wonder if it must it, be a video game are you sure? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I would play it, considering in uh, my character Lassiter Lore Seeker is from Candle Keep. So why would I not play this game? I would play it. You will play it when you have more knowledge of what it is. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, and Craig says I'm still waiting on um, Game of Thrones season eight. <laughs> we all are, man. Oh, Next wow. year. It is. A, it is a game, a okay. video game. Nice. Um, I'm looking at the Steam page, so it's available on Steam. I don't know if it's available on anything else. Nice. Yep. Um, game of Thrones. I really l liked. <laughs> yeah. Past tense. No, Game of Thrones is really great. Um, like it has a really cool world and political mechanic and whatever mm -hmm. um but the the fact that like it and i started reading the books i had not read the books before watching, before shows. watching it okay. and i really really enjoyed it and was really surprised like how much i enjoyed it even though i didn't know anything about the books and then when they started was it season six that they started to diverging really like, divert from completely it completely yeah. diverging from the mm -hmm. original plot line I could tell, like, I could tell that it was a, it was a TV script and no longer, like, this underlying, mm -hmm. like, story script, and that really lost it for me, like, which really? was sad, like, yeah. Hmm. Some of my, the character writing, I just felt like, like, there were a couple things that Jamie Lannister did that I just felt like was not what he would do, and I'm like, no. As you were watching his character progression. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so, and I was like, oh, the TV show is, like, trying to create drama, and I'm, and it, to me, it just felt really forced which was sad because I wanted. Because you're talking about how he still. I mean, if you haven't watched it. Uh, like, and I saw, so I meaning, like, I haven't seen the spoiler. most recent season because I'm. So just season like, seven. Yeah. Okay. So I, in season six, though, he still is back in Cersei's play after all the stuff she's done. Right. right. And you're like, how could he do this? Yeah. Yeah. Considering the way he's, he was being portrayed in his interactions with Brienne of Tarth. Yeah. Where it seemed like exactly. he was becoming more aware and uh, of his, you know. Of like the wrong, the, what's right and wrong? His, yeah, his like heart. Yeah. <laughs> we're being convicted. Yeah. And then it was just like, oh, and then he went back to what he was doing, and yeah. so, yeah. Then he hitting so says Game of Thrones got way too boring, and I would agree. And like the whole thing, the whole arc with um, uh, what's it called? The ladies from Dorne. The, uh, the Sand Snakes. I had a lot of problems with them. Really? <laughs> yeah, they were super lame. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh man, this is TV writing, this is TV writing. Ah, like, but what did you think of them in the book? I haven't read that Oh, you haven't read that far? <laughs> okay, because they are in the books. I know they're in the books, and I know they're like a lot, like there's a whole thing about Doran mm -hmm. in the books. I just haven't read th that far into the books. Okay. I read up to three, and then I was like, oh. Okay. And then it got to the wall, and Sam, sorry, I'm really going on a tangent here, but it got to the wall, and... Um, it, it's really boring on the wall, <laughs> and so reading it in the in the in the series, they just are like, oh yeah, at the wall, they're still like having a hard time, and in the book, it's like three chapters of them having a hard, hard time. time. And they're like, oh yeah. Oh, so the one thing about that I really liked of, that the show didn't do that the book does mm -hmm. is talk about all the food. <laughs> just pages of yeah. the meals consisted of. That's true. Boiled acorns and yeah. leeks and this and that. And it's like... And every time you, you go to Tyrion... wonder how I put on 80 pounds. <laughs> and every time they go to Tyrion Lannister, they literally describe, like, every meal he's eating. You're yep. like, okay, I get it. He eats. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah. But the one thing that is good about the books, in you know, instead of uh, the, um, the show is... When you read the books and you're in every scene that Tyrion Lannister is in, mm -hmm. when he says something, his inner dialogue mirrors it. Mm -hmm. He it honestly is possible. It's probably the most honest character yeah. in Game of Thrones. That's true. 
yeah, you really know what he's going through. <laughs> I also think you have a little bit, like, and I think, uh, what's his face? Peter Dinklage? Dinklage? He mm -hmm. does a really good job. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they didn't make him as ugly as he could have been, though. Right. But that's neither here nor there. Oh, another fantasy is, um, is, uh, Find the Witch in the Wardrobe. Oh, yeah, the Narnia like, Tales a, a of Narnia. Like, a while ago. Uh, the reason I was thinking about that is because in the Prince Caspian one, they, like, make Prince Caspian look way different than he was supposed to in the book. Okay. Um, so just remind me of that. Like, not, but movies not following, like, the book description. Right. Which is always a little sad, but whatever. And um, Chris says the books are better than the movies. Always. Um, yeah, I would probably agree with that. Which is why sometimes I try not to read the... I just look at them, look at them as different. two different things. Yeah. I mean, they're two different mediums trying to tell the same story, and you can't capture. Right. So I, I look for the enjoyment of what I would like in it, like the dragons. Mm -hmm. Whoa, amazing. The White Walkers, sick. Yeah, that's Wan true. Wan. I see what Wan you're saying. Juan the Giant. Yeah. My brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, another, like, I guess this would be considered fantasy, but like How's Moving Castle. Have you ever seen that? It's an Which, animated it? film. It's an animated, like, Japanese film, but it's also, like, a fantasy, an English fantasy book. Okay. What's it called? Howl's Moving Castle. Um, oh! No. By Miyazaki. <laughs> I saw one where this... Ponyo. It's, like, the ghost the guy who does Ponyo. I don't know any of these words you're saying. Okay. Never You're mind. at the studio... Is it Ghibli or Studio, Ghibli? yeah. Studio Ghibli. What, what's the one where the guy, the kid, is, like, this, like... Super warrior, but he's, he has this like moving, this moving tavern, and he starts picking up these other warriors that are. No. Nope. Oh, we watch it in the lunchroom here a couple times. It sounds familiar. I can't think of what it is. Yeah, he has a tavern, and uh, he's like this like f super like warrior that's wanted by the king. Oh, okay. And uh, the the, the um, they send out these warriors to try to kill him and. He starts accumulating these other warriors with him. And oh, that's cool. Like any adventure, you start getting your companions. Right, right, right. Um, Chris says, I wish they would make a movie based on the Thieves' World. Ooh, yeah. Um, Thieves' World, would that be with uh, um, Fafnard and the Grey Mauser and all that? Um, I can't recall. I, just, I feel like that was where those guys kind of were from. Oh, rush, rush. Sorry, Johnny. I keep, I keep changing my angle. So, what's the blue that you're putting on there? Are those veins? It's hard to see from this angle. Uh, yeah, they're supposed to be... Well, I was trying to make, like, some highlights. Well, not highlights, but, like, shadows. Oh, wow, it looks really messy on the, the camera. Um... I was just trying to provide some shadow to this guy. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if that's really how I was supposed to do that. But <laughs> trying to, try to be artistic and creative. Uh, Steve says another good animated movie is Dragonlance: Dragons of Autumn Twilight, which is dra which is you know again the Dragonlance theme, um, and the voice actors that played the characters in that movie are amazing. You have um, Lucy Lawless. Okay. You have Michael Rosenbaum, who played Lex Luthor on Smallville. Oh, okay. And you've got... Um, uh, who was the main vampire from Lost Boys? Kiefer Sutherland. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland plays I, I the voice of... I didn't have time to turn my mic on. I was getting there. Raceland. <laughs> okay. Who is the, the sickly wizard. Um... And there are a couple others. I can't remember all of them, but those are the ones that really stick out. Okay. What what series was that? Uh, drag. It was only one movie, but it was the first, basically based on the first book of the Dragonlance Chronicles. Oh. Okay. And it was called Dragons of Autumn Twilight. Okay, I see what you're saying. Oh, um, Craig says the show Rick was talking about was called The Seven Deadly Sins. Oh, yeah, it was. It was called The Seven Deadly Tent Sins. Oh, yeah. On Netflix. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It was animated, yeah. Yes. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, I saw that. That was meh. It was, it was right. okay. 
Yeah, I didn't watch all of it. I yeah, sorry, I did not realize. That's what you were talking about. There you go. Oh, Stormbringer. Yes. Wait, based on the Abhorson series? I don't know that. Oh, Stormbringer. Okay. The show Yeah, I also want. You know, who doesn't want an Elminster movie? Come on. That would be amazing. Could you imagine, too, if it was open narrated, openly narrated by, like, Ed Greenwood, who created the Forgotten Realms and is basically Elminster incarnate? <laughs> that would be amazing. Because I would love to see him with the, um, with, uh, the uh, Silverhand uh, sisters, all the, all the sisters that um, have Spellfire abilities, uh, Kelvin Blackstaff from Waterdeep. I mean, there's so much in the Forgotten Realms that you could... I mean, I'd rather see it as an animated series, mm -hmm. but because there, again, there's so much. If you just did it based on the Harpers, the secret society of good people in the in the realms that are always up against like the Zentirum, which are the bad guys. Okay. Or one of the bad guys. There's a lot of bad guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, that would be freaking awesome. Just a Harper trilogy, because or Harper series, because then you could bring in any of the other iconic characters to include Drizzt. Uh, Anybody from Icewind Dale, um, from Neverwinter, mm -hmm. everything. It'd be awesome. I see what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. That would be good. It's always, and sometimes an animated series is good because then you don't have to worry about actors. Like, exactly. you can have voices, and then if the voices, like, happen to change, you know that, like, there's, like, longevity to it a little yeah. bit. You don't have to worry about actors aging out. Yeah. And, like, doing weird makeup thing. Right. See you later, James. Have a good day at work. All right, James. Volo. Yeah. Oh, oh Volo's Tales. Volo, who's like the the big uh, traveler who goes around the realms and comes up with all... He, he's big, we were talking about yesterday because Johnny writes traveling guides. Um, but <laughs> Volo's guide to, to the realms, you know? Yeah. Um, that's kind of what this character does. He he's, he's the traveling guide writer for the Forgotten Realms. Okay. That's cool. I just write traveling guides on where to buy watches. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. The best places to buy watches in any given city. Johnny knows. Yes, he does. Clive says, I would love a Dritzt or Waylader. Waylayer. Way, Waylander? Yeah, sorry. Uh, series? Yeah. The Harpels, the wizard family? Oh, yeah, the Harpels. Nuts. They're crazy. We just need to get some of those actor people to talk to the right people that's right to be able to do that because that's really what it is <laughs> yeah well you gotta get takes... people to come in to write it and yeah get the rights to do it mm -hmm. you know yeah i didn't think about that but there's so much content out there already that it would be easy to pull stuff okay well yeah yeah i mean it's honestly kind of like when Mar marvel decided to like make movies it was like mm -hmm. oh yeah that makes sense because there's a ton of stuff that they can pull yeah, from. Yeah, already. They could pull from any of the worlds. <laughs> so, yeah, it's yeah. a similar thing where it's like all yeah. that. But this would all like, be animated. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So, if you listen to Netflix, call <laughs> me up. I'll write the first one. I'll be a voice actor. <laughs> there we have it. There you go. For free. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That would be awesome. Yeah. Uh oh, am I getting the five minute warning? Apparently. I'm getting it from Josh. Thanks, from, Josh. From Mini <laughs> Painting Studios. He's on top of it. Yeah, he's take, taking Johnny's job over. <laughs> no, he just wants us to finish up so he can like, take all of our viewers. It's true. Which he should. Yeah. So exactly. that's true. Which, and he's a way better painter, so. He is amazing. There is no doubt. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. <laughs> right. So if you are but watching this and you want to keep watching people paint, true. Uh, in the painting happy little minis group, uh, Josh with Mini Painting Studios will be probably broadcasting live through there. Yes. He shares it in there, so you can watch Josh play paint, and he is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, if you want to watch someone who really knows what they're doing, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. similar to Deep. <laughs> Someone with lots of talent. And Drew and yeah. everybody and else. And Drew, yes, yeah. go check out Drew. 
So let me put up the where I'm at with these little guys as well. All my little creatures. Oh, I want this shadow to be better. Ah, last minute paint speed. Speed painting. Oh my goodness. There we go. There's so many little teeny weensies going. Hey, oh, did you hear me once you zoom out a little bit? Yeah, you got okay, it. sorry. And my purple, blue, my blue purple. Aw, what a all cute my little, family. All my little cuties. Aw, they're so adorable. <laughs> You're right, they really are. Bears. They do like, they're drop bears. Yeah. They are. Dave, they're drop bears. You're missing it. <laughs> and then my little pygmy guys, I gotta put some green in there for the for some of the leafy stuff. And those guys will pretty much be done. I'll put some flesh tone on the face of the bears so that, you know, they're frightening. Do you want to put um, my, yes. my guy on there? I do. My gal. Let's see it. Woohoo. <laughs> I'm excited. I tried to make the wings leathery. Yeah, they look good. Or, and that's why they're, and it looks really orange. It's not supposed to be as orange as that. Yeah, but I can but still see like the texture, like what you were going for in yeah. the wings. Yeah, I was trying yeah. to make it look leathery like wings. Mm -hmm. And then I went too ham on that shadow. <laughs> well, here's the thing that we can do with that is um, probably use some sort of like wash to yeah. blend it in yeah. better. I kind of wanted to create, um, movement on like some different I don't know the wings are really big <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about words it looks good <laughs> I wanted to create definition listen to this big. this is funny Emily says Emily uh, says reminds me of the episode of South Park thank you for calling Netflix your show is greenlit how may I help you <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's fun Walter says he likes that the way it is thanks Walter yeah it's very cool all right, so that's pretty much. I think we're at the uh, we're at the last. We got three minutes left. What, what do I want to talk about for the last three minutes? We probably should talk about this game. Woo! Tomb of Annihilation. Yeah. So uh, it's a game for uh, one to five players. It's ages fourteen and up. It takes about sixty minutes to play. Probably takes about sixty minutes to set up. It look because there's a lot of stuff. It doesn't take that long. But it's about sixty minutes to set up, but it does have like lots of pieces. So this mm. game is. Um, it has board pieces and it also has scenarios that you can play through. Right. Um, and so that's what kind of makes it the board game as mm. opposed to just the book. Right. Um, which is really nice. And as I said last episode, it's like very accessible. Mm -hmm. um, you have the minis. You can get them painted. Yeah, there's a, there's a version of that has pre-painted minis. Pre-painted minis. And then there's a really version cool. which we have which is unpainted minis. Um, um, but the, it, the this version allows for you to have those scenarios without you having to put in that time to right. create them, um, which I think is really nice and really mm -hmm. accessible. Lots of really cool cards, but it does have like all those pieces that you then can yeah. interact with um, on your on your tiles, yeah. like as the story goes along. So and a butt ton of miniatures. Yes. Yeah, it has a lot of miniatures. It has forty two plastic heroes, monsters, and villains. Yep. That's a lot of miniatures for for a box game. Like it this. is nice. Yeah, so. very full set. And if you were to think about it alone, if you were to go and uh, buy just the the stone juggernaut in package, mm -hmm. it's probably between fifteen and twenty dollars mm -hmm. by itself. Yeah. Whereas the box is right about I think it's ninety nine dollars. I think it's about a hundred bucks for the okay. box. So this right here takes up that's the majority of it right there, and it's definitely worth it because this is possibly the most fearsome thing an yeah. adventurer could see. Yes. It, it, it's like the giant rolling ball from Indiana Jones. Yes, it that is, is true. It will come down and crush you. And when it crushes you, it has the skull prints on here. As it rolls over, it's gonna take all your blood and just keep tracking it. It's gross yeah. and scary. And I keep saying like this is really good for like entry level, but I think anyone who's a fan of, or an old fan, or mm. a very experienced player, yeah. it's also really accessible. There are lots of like more difficult scenarios right. um, that they made, so it's not just a beginner's game. It's, yeah. it's for any fan. It's for anybody, yeah. anybody. It's perfect. And you can pick this up at your friendly local game store right now. They're available at all of them. If they're not on the shelf there, then ask them to order one in for you. All right, that's pretty much our, our spiel. We always talk about that. You gotta go to your friendly local game yes. store and become part of the community and uh, and all that stuff. But also, go over to Painting Happy Little Minis and check out our group. Yes. If you wanna see all the amazing uh, miniatures that are painted, not just on our show, um, but 
all of the people that are in that group are phenomenal painters. Yeah. Uh, and you can watch others that, like Realm Smith TV, mm -hmm. he uh, shares his broadcasts in there. Uh, Juan and Cheros shares their broadcast when he does his, yep. and uh, Mini Painting Studios. And you, everybody that's in there is more than welcome to stream their 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 uh, painting in that group, because that's all what, what it's about. It's community, helping each other become better painters, ask the right questions, yep. get the right answers. Yeah, it's really fun. It's a lot of uh, beginner and experienced and all levels of painting, having mm -hmm. a good time together. So definitely join that if you're mm -hmm. um, ev interested at all in right. Mini Painting. And we'd just like to say, hey, Dave, uh, if you're watching us from wherever you are, rest in peace. Uh, we miss you, and we hope that you are doing well uh, with all things that you're doing. Um, maybe he'll be back someday. Yeah. We, we, we hope that he will return. Come back to us, we hope Dave. He'll return. <laughs> <laughs> we do miss you. We hope you're having a wonderful time. He is in the chat. That's why I said that. Uh, we hope you're having a wonderful time over in Mario, England, and uh, that you're getting lots of cool leads on some cool opportunities. Uh, yes. with the different companies you're interacting with over there. All righty. All right. And there, that's it. Uh, so this has been Painting Happy Little Minis. I am your host, Rick. And I'm Leona. And we'll see you at the game store. <laughs>